guys, whenever we think about the word family business, we think about uh, typically a Lala company or a mom and pop store. But the fact is that 90% of the businesses around the world or maybe 95% business around the world have started by a family. And obviously, like the father started the business, he needed one more hand, the mother joined and how the businesses got together. So perhaps the largest retail company in the world started as a family business and one of the largest software companies in this country also started as a family business. The fact is that are we harnessing the true potential of their family business? So before going to that, I just share a small story. So being in academics for a very long time, not that long also, it's about 10 years, and I came across one of the situations. So you all understand the word placement season. So during the placement season, one of the students approached me. And obviously, placement season, why do they approach to uh, professors? You know that. Okay, see the smile in that. Correct. So they approached me and they said that, sir, I'm looking for a job and I didn't get a job of my choice, which is correct. So I said that, but I have only family companies and in case you're interested for a family business, choice is yours. And he said, but sir, then what will I write on my resume? I mean, I mean, I don't have a big company on my resume. And the problem is, another 10 years later, when he steps out of the world and he's talking to his friends, his friend might end up saying that I own or I am a part of this big company, that big company. Perhaps I bought a Mercedes or a BMW. And this guy, a part of a family business, what recognition does he have? I mean, just imagine, guys, there was one student of mine who came and said, I am ready to be a clerk in a very big company, but not become the manager in a family company. But that happens. Anyways, long story short, I talked to this student and I convinced him somehow that why don't you join a family business? I don't know what happened, but he got convinced. Okay, perhaps there was a DNA within him that was belonging to a business family. Okay, so I'm not blaming any community, but you all understand what I mean by that. Okay, there are certain communities and that the DNA is built into there. And so the moment they think about business, okay, let me give a try. Anyway, so this guy got into the family business and long story short, 10 years later, the patriarch of that family business is actually out of the family business. And this guy, not out as in ownership out, he still owns the company, but this boy is now taking decisions, taking head on challenges and approaching different, different management situations by himself. Now, does this always happen? Maybe no. But if we keep on opening other perspective, why we might never hit to the right ideas. So the idea is this uh, idea is worth spreading when we talk about TEDx over the last two to three years maybe. I and my director have gone across India spreading one simple idea. And that idea is spreading awareness about family business. And that makes me bring that that, that makes me come here as well. And I'm going to come up with five postulates or five elements of construct. And those five elements are so powerful that will help us understand harnessing the potential of family business. So the first element of the construct is trust. So whenever I use the word trust, you know, there are a lot of wise people in this world who open up jargons, okay, and they tell me what does trust is defined, how is trust defined, etc. I'm a man of the streets. I like real meaning. I'm a practical person. For me, the trust is a very, very simple definition. And the definition is how many of you have experienced and seen trust the way I understand and explain? How many of you were kids you playing with your mother and the mother throws you up right in the air and you're still smiling. How many of you experienced that? How many of you seen that? And the kid is smiling because she knows the mother is there and mother is going to immediately catch the child. Yes or no? That connection is trust. That connection is our trust. On the lighter side, when the WhatsApp generation came into being, they said that when the kid is thrown like that, if it is a father at the start, the kid starts crying. Okay. Yeah. But anyways, that's not relevant, right? Now the point is that that element of trust is what is making a family managed business or rather a family business. Now the idea is what are trust are you talking about? Trust with the employees. Trust with the stakeholders. Trust on the suppliers, on the vendors, everybody. Across the value chain, when the trust is established, that normally comes from a family business. For example, you might have come across 
different different organizations who have a plug and play model. So the organization comes on rental property, they start a business, and in a very short time, you perhaps start getting connected with them, and one fine day, the rental property is clean, the business is gone, and they don't exist. Whereas in a matter of family business, it becomes very different. The stakes are high. The stakes are high because it's the family name that is attached, and that becomes the pivotal value of relationship. So when we talk of the word trust, the pivotal thing is the base. I mean, I very openly tell my students that you are what you are is not because of what you are. You are what you are is because of the very strong family name that's attached to you. And learn to trust that family name. That name can make you a wonderful person. And so, therefore, your behavior, your conduct, everything is driven by that. So that's the first foundation of trust in a family business. My second postulate or the second element of the construct is commitment. I'm not citing any famous dialogue by any Bollywood hero on commitment. Okay. Yeah. But the fact is, whenever we look at the word commitment, what does the word strike to us? What does the word strike to us? So night, one o'clock, in case you get a call, you're ready to answer. And that happens in a family business. In case your employee comes running to you, perhaps joined two months late, and he comes to you and says, Kishar, my mother's ill. Do you even look at that person? No. Remove 10,000 pieces, hand it over, and just take care of the mother. That element of commitment from both sides is an amazing way of reaching out to people. And that potential of family business is amazing. I mean, I won't, don't say that professional organizations, corporate organizations, or different type of organization don't have that. But any, I can give you some very example which can help you understand what I mean by commitment here. So different organizations have three different types of commitment. One, intellectual commitment. So people who are connected because they think they should be connected. So they are connected with the word, what is in it for me? The second type of people who are committed are emotionally connected to organization. Whatever happens to the organization, I know I will be taken care of. And third type of people who are connected are spiritually committed to organization. The organization grows, his esteem grows. I go as industrial visits to different, different companies and colleges, or different, different institutions. I take my students. Very recently, I was in Rajkot, in fact, about two days back. And I visited a company. And the visit was being conducted by the professionals of this company. And every line, every line, the person who was showing the company used to mention this. We build this, our production is this, our manufacturing this, our employees are doing this, our, our, our. And all my students began asking me, sir, how is this possible? Is it done by him? I said, no. It's not done by him. It's done by somebody else. But the level of commitment that has come out is making him say the word our. And that is a DNA that can be infused extremely strong by virtue of family business because that's the way you approach people. When your salesperson, just a new guy, joins, he cracks the first client, you don't write an appreciation letter, you pat on the back, and that is a booster. When you got a tea fire by your pune and the pune gets the tea and you taste it, it's wonderful, you pat on the back, the level of commitment gets reinforced. He moves from intellectual commitment to emotional and from emotional commitment to spiritual commitment. If given an opportunity, that is something that every one of us should take away from a family business. So that's my second postulate. My third postulate is value. Okay? As such, Continuous practice of a particular value becomes a virtue. But I would like to start with a very, very simple example, okay? And just tell me how many of you can connect with this. It will be a wonderful thing. Just a show of hands, because you're not allowed to communicate, but just a show of hands, okay? How many of you have experienced this type of a scenario? So you come back in the evening back at your home. Maybe you're working, you're a student, or maybe you have your business. And you are tired, actually tired. Had a bad day, scolding from the company, or you had a customer who didn't pay up, or Diwali coming in and the money has not coming in, bad times, the stock market crashing, you didn't get your shares, or whatever, I don't know, whatever the condition. 
and you come back sit with your family at that time your 70 year old daddy or say uh, grandmother or somebody just comes maybe on the crutches or in a wheelchair or if she's fit and fine she just comes talking to you and puts the hand on your head and says beta what's the problem and you're eating the food hot chapati is being served this is a normal dinner scenario and at that time you just 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 in a passing thought, say, Mama, you won't understand, you know. Diwali coming the other side corner, payments not coming in, bonus has to be given, crisis, you don't know how much is going on, etc., etc., etc. And the mother, sorting the hand, just passes one small remark, you know, beta, and then she gives a solution. Next day morning, you go to the company, fresh, you give the solution. All your employees think my son is a genius. The sir real know how he genius he is. Okay. Now my question to every one of you is that what is the motive for the grandmother to give such an idea? The value of selflessness is the foundation of family business. That lady, that lady has no interest. It doesn't matter whether you're going to make crores or multi crores. She has lived in a hut, you grew this much, she's more than happy. Maybe she will not see tomorrow also. But she has seen you tension free, she has lived her life and she's actually contented. That's the spirit of value. And in value, the pivotal point is selflessness. So that's my third postulate. My second last postulate appreciation very recently I was taking very recently I was taking a business plan of a family and in that what happened actually is the husband was a part of the business plan along with me and when he was talking when the wife was presenting the husband walked down after about half an hour when the presentation was done and the wife got a little annoyed and I said why are you upset and she said that for the first time in my life, I have done a PowerPoint presentation and he did not appreciate. Okay. So then I knew who will have a bad day. <laughs> but there were very different things. That's okay. I asked the lady one question. And I asked the question, how many times have you appreciated your husband? When he has done a wonderful order, when he got his best suit, when he got the biggest order, when he executed the finest project, how many times? And she immediately said, I thought that this is duty. Well, exactly. He thought this is your duty. Okay, please learn to appreciate. And that's one of the foundations in a family business. In case you happen to go to a restaurant or a five-star hotel, and the door is being opened by the guy who comes, the guy who's opening the door. And when the door is being opened, he shuts down. And at that point of time, when you say thank you to the doorman and appreciate it by saying thank you very much. In fact, in today's time, it is a requirement also. Because in case you don't do that and he's not in a good mood, your 45 lakh rupees car, because when he gives you that small stub, it is written on that parking is at the risk of the owner. So very important element is appreciation, which is the second last. And finally, my last postulate, respect. Respect for what? And respect for whom? Guys, whenever we talk about family business, I have a very strong feeling that we have to learn to respect the people who created it. So first of all, in case anybody is making notes, it's wonderful to make this note. First of all, have a respect for the ancestors who created the family and the family business. The second respect you have is for the people who are helping you to achieve your dreams. So your employees, your stakeholders, your supporters, your family members. Third respect is for your customer and supplier. Very recently I came across a businessman. 
and businessman is a big businessman now, around right now probably a 2000 crore company he has, but he still maintains touch with his vendors. And I asked him why to maintain touch with the vendors and he came up with a superb answer. He said, whenever the product has to be purchased, my purchase manager looks after. But whenever there is some problem, I go to the vendor. I go to the supplier and talk to the supplier. What is the problem? Why are you not able to supply the product on time? What is the hurdle? And if in any way I can help you resolve the hurdle, I would be graceful and helping you to do that whether you make my payment or not. Guys, respect the people across the value chain. That is what a family business is about. So, respect for everybody. So, that was my third foundation. And then fourth point in respect is respect yourself. So, after all these three things, in case you are left with something, then respect for yourself. You know, I get across a call from different, different people. So they deliberately call them. So I get a call from a doctor, no offense to them, but I get a call from a doctor and say, I am Dr. Dalal speaking. Why did you have to suffix doctor? I mean, why can't you be simple human being? Okay, many times when I give a call and I talk that I am Samish Dalal, the other person says, are you a professor? <laughs> no, because then why did you use the word professor Dalal? I don't need to. Let respect be earned. Don't ask for it, guys. You do something, you get it. And Indian family businesses have earned that respect and therefore there is a lot that you can explore and exploit the potential of that. Okay? Guys, towards the end, I would like to make a very small summary. And that summary is not written anywhere. It coming straight from the heart. And that summary is this. Given a chance, given an opportunity, I would request everyone sitting here, everyone, to help, support, and also foster the potential of family business. In case you have one, join it. Give your life one chance. There could be a difference of opinion between the family, but that's going to be good. It's developmental. But the idea is, let the family business potential grow. This five postulates or five elements are the five Panch Pandavas which has the potential to destroy all the hundred Kauravas or the, all the hundred negativities that may exist around the world.